Hello, my name's Robert Dean Steele. Let me just move this over here like that for just a moment. And it is, of course, our prayer time for uh, another prayer time, I should say, for January the 16th. Now, today, I, 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 I just want to tell you that right today, I really want to focus on, again, a theme. And I haven't, I haven't prayed about this particular theme for a few days. And so I thought today we need to once again pray. So, Father, we're praying for our young people, our children, our young people, our young adults, our young families, and our families with teenagers. Now, Lord, I don't have young children anymore, but my children actually have children. We just had another grandchild, and his name is Caleb, and he is about 11 days old. And then I also have a grandson whose name is Gideon, who happens to be 17. And Basically, I have nine grandchildren that are in that age bracket. Now, it's a real privilege to be able to interact with each one of them and to see how each one is just representing a certain age. Father, I want to spend some time today. Now, of course, having grandchildren. The one thing that I want to see happen is I want them to be men and women of legacy. And uh, I'm grateful that most of them have biblical names of one or another. And that's great. And Father, I want to thank you today for that. And I want to thank you also for the destiny that they are going to have. Now, Lord, I'm not going to be so selfish and just pray entirely for my own grandchildren. Today, I want to pray for all children young people, young adults, young families and families with teenagers. And Lord, I know that there's a lot of pressure these days on our kids. There's a lot of pressure on moms and dads, especially Lord, with the agenda of evil that is being promoted these days, politically, culturally, educationally. Special interest groups, Lord, are trying to put forth their agenda. And then, of course, we have world formats and all this stuff coming against our kids. And they want to shape our kids into the images and the standards of this world. Now, Lord, we've got to remind our kids that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. And that this world is not the all and be all. But Lord, it's hard because our kids want to find their place in this world. They want to have an identity of their own, something that they can hold on to and something that will make them distinct of all the 8 billion people that live on this planet. Now, I know, for example, in the scientific realm, they will tell our kids that they are, you know, basically a bunch of chemicals. That's what uh, my science teacher tried to tell us. He says, listen, you're just a bunch of chemicals back in the day. He said, you're worth about nine bucks. And uh, I sat there and I said, wait a minute, I'm not worth nine bucks. Listen, I am made in the image of God. Now, this was before I came to know the Lord, but I didn't buy that evolution stuff at all because he basically said, you know, there we started off as an amoeba and then in time, you know, because of the toxic uh, beginning, the big bang and everything blew out. Now we evolved to this. And I thought, no, I don't subscribe to that at all. There's got to be more to this. And of course, we know that the Bible tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We need to pray for our kids that they don't buy the lie of the enemy. And then, of course, there's interest, special interest groups that are trying to promote their particular agenda. There was a, a rally back in June of last year where some activists, when it came to gender and certain uh, types of agendas, they said, we're coming for your kids. Well, we're not going to let you have our kids. We're going to pray against you. We're going to say, not on my watch is this thing going to happen. But Father, 
the best thing that we can do is we can pray for mom and dad and we can stand with them in prayer. And if the opportunity comes, we are going to share our faith with our kids and remind them about the goodness of God. One of the things that I really enjoyed doing uh, just a couple of days uh, after my grandson Caleb was born was I took him in my arms and I said, Caleb, you are going to be a mighty man of God. You are going to be just like your namesake. You are going to stand out among the generations. You are going to go against the flow. And you're going to say, we can take the land. And Father, that's what I'm believing for my grandson, Lewis, that he is going to be a man of God who is going to stand out among his generation. And he's going to be able to say to his generation, we can do this. We can take the land. But Father, we need to pray for them. We need to pray for our kids. We need to pray for our grandkids. We need to pray for this generation that they will be strong and they will do exploits, as it says in Daniel 11.32. So, Father, thank you for this privilege of prayer. And we thank you that, Lord, our kids are going to serve you and love you with every fiber of the brain. We're praying towards that, towards household salvation and for destiny. And we pray this all now in Jesus' name. Amen.